Hi, I'm Norm Smith of Max Tenor, and today in this video I'm going to demonstrate to you how to make use of the Max Tenor GPS Helix Tuning Kit. Now, the GPS Helix Tuning Kit, if you've received it and opened it up, you'll notice there are five antenna helix elements inside. The reason why you would choose to use a tuning kit in the first place is if you're trying to embed one of our embedded helix antennas into your application, like any antenna that's embedded, there'll be a downward sh shift in frequency that corresponds to the dielectric loading on the antenna in your application or your device. That means with the plastic housing and the circuit board, there will be a frequency shift downwards versus the free space um, performance of the antenna. And so the benefit of using this tuning kit to you is to speed your design cycle time versus shipping your product to Max Tenor and having us custom tune an antenna for you. So it saves time and it saves money. Okay, so today, before we get going, I would like to recommend, if you have not done already, that you download the Max Tenor application note, which is a detailed application note explaining what you're going to see in the video today and give you some close-up screenshots and some descriptions of how to use it. And hopefully, with the application note and this video, you are armed with enough information in order to be successful with using the tuning kit and optimizing the antenna for your application. So the application note is one of the things you'll need for today. You'll need the tuning kit itself. You're going to need your device. Um, today I've got here just an example of a Helix antenna embedded into a, a customer device and that's the embedded environment that I'm referring to. You also need a laptop for running the software. And the software I'm referring to here is called um, the U-Center software, which comes with a development kit that we've got here for test purposes, which is a U-Blox GPS receiver, which is connected via a USB cable to the laptop. And that provides both power and allows the laptop and software to communicate with the receiver. We've also got an RF cable going to the GPX Helix antenna element here. And these Helix antenna elements come with three prongs, two grounds and the center pins, the signal pin. And so you want a connector that allows you to just plug on, rather than soldering, the antenna onto that um, adapter. And we're gonna be testing today in free space. And in order to make sure that the antenna is synthesizing an embedded environment because they're tuned for an embedded environment, we're going to load it with a radome, one of our own radomes, and that synthesizes the embedded environment of your application. So again, the Helix is not tuned for free space, it's tuned for an embedded, embedded environment, which we're going to synthesize here by putting a radome on top of it. You, in fact, will be not testing in free space, you will be testing inside of your device, in which case the loading will be provided by the plastic. And so if you choose to do some functional testing in free space, make sure that you take into account these antennas that are designed to be used in a loaded environment and provide some amount of dielectric loading to synthesize the frequency shift that that will cause. You'll notice I'm actually starting out the video today in the lab. Uh, in actual fact, as you probably are aware, GPS signals are not going to penetrate this building very well. And so we do have to move outdoors now to the outside environment so we have a free, clear view of the sky and so that the antenna can actually pick up the GPS signal.
Okay, so we're situated on the roof of our building here. We've got a clear 360 degree view of the sky. That's important because we want to see the GPS satellites and make sure the antenna can see the GPS satellites. And we're going to be using today our Ublox development kit, which includes a software called UCenter. And so that will allow us to view the carrier to noise from the receiver with the antenna connected to it. And so to start off with, we're going to start with the lowest frequency in the kit, which corresponds to the red color coded antenna. As I mentioned earlier, that antenna we are testing here in a, effectively a free space environment, but it's not tuned for free space, it's tuned for an embedded environment. So we have to synthesize an embedded environment or your customer environment by putting the radome over here for the purpose of this test. In reality, you would be doing this testing in your device with the plastic and ideally the final plastics on the housing to synthesize the frequency shift the antenna is going to experience in production versions of your product. So here we go and uh, you'll see a close-up screenshot shortly of the carry to noise and how many satellites are being tracked with the red color-coded helix antenna from the tuning kit. Now keep in mind that most GPS receiver uh, module or radio vendors um, consider 40 dB as a good carry to noise level and so that's what we're looking for and we're looking to see how many satellites we can track with this antenna um, connected and loaded dielectrically with your application environment. Okay, so we've just determined that the red color-coded helix antenna can show the amount of satellites that you saw. Now we want to see how many can be viewed with the next in the series up. I recommend when you do this in practice, you go through all five and see which one works best for you. For the purpose of our test today, in the interest of time, I'm going to just skip um, the black one in the series and jump straight to the blue one. So here I go plugging in the blue one and this is going up higher in frequency. I've got to load it dielectrically to synthesize your environment and here we go and I'm going to view the screen now and see how many satellites can actually be viewed. Okay, so you will have just seen close up a screenshot of how many satellites were being tracked in the carry to noise levels with the blue. So I'm going to remove my artificial loading on the antenna here, unplug it, and plug in the purple, which is uh, the highest frequency that we have in the kit. And when you're doing this, make sure that uh, in your application, you're giving the antenna a clear view of the sky. So here these helix antennas are ground plane independent. So the fact that I'm holding it here shouldn't have any effect on the performance. And again, this is really just a test environment. You should test this in your environment and in the setup that best simulates the customer use model for your device. So again, check the screen and see how many satellites can be tracked. So I'm able to determine from looking at my screen that the blue antenna gave us the best performance. Now remember, ideally you want to track at least a minimum of four satellites with a good carry to noise. And so the blue antenna gave us that best performance. So this is the one that I'm going to recommend to my purchasing department to place orders for. And the blue corresponds to Max Tenner's part number M, 
1575 HCT-22-P-E2 and the dash E2 is what corresponds to the blue color code and so that is the purchase order would go through to an authorized distributor or directly to Max Tenor for that specific color code so in production you'd be ordering the right part number that's tuned to your environment. So thank you for watching this video today. Uh, we hope this has been helpful to you and enables you to have a truly optimized antenna performance and really an optimum performing product in the market. Thank you.